Hello, I'm Thomas Malone. I'm professor in the MIT Sloan School of Management and director of the MIT Center for Collective Intelligence. It's important to realize that intelligence is not just something that happens inside individual brains. It also arises with groups of individuals. In fact, I would define collective intelligence as groups of individuals acting collectively in ways that seem intelligent. Now, by this definition, collective intelligence has existed for thousands of years. Companies, countries, families, these are all examples of groups of people acting together in ways that at least sometimes seem intelligent. Now, of course, it's also possible for groups of people to act in ways that seem pretty stupid, and collective stupidity is just as possible as collective intelligence. One of the goals of our research, of course, is to understand better the conditions that lead to collective intelligence rather than collective stupidity. So in some form, collective intelligence has existed for thousands of years. But in the last few years, we've seen some very new kinds of collective intelligence enabled by the internet. Think of Google, for instance, where millions of people all over the world have created web pages, linked those web pages to each other, and then the Google technology harvests all that knowledge so that when you type a question in the Google search bar, the answers you get often seem amazingly intelligent. Or think of Wikipedia, where thousands of people all over the world have collectively created a very large and amazingly high quality intellectual product with almost no centralized control and by the way without even being paid. So I think these early examples of internet enabled collective intelligence like Wikipedia and Google are not the end of the story. I think they're just barely the beginning. I think we're likely to see far more examples like this over the coming decades. And if we want to try to predict what's going to happen, especially if we want to try to shape or take advantage of what's going to happen, we need to understand the possibilities at a much deeper level than we do so far. That's our goal in our research at the MIT Center for Collective Intelligence. One of the core questions we ask ourselves is, how can people and computers be connected so that collectively they act more intelligently than any person, group, or computer has ever done before? One of the things I think is particularly interesting about the Center for Collective Intelligence is the degree to which it's a deeply interdisciplinary activity. The center is housed in the Sloan School of Management, but it includes key participants from many other departments around MIT, from the Computer Science and AI Lab, from the Media Lab, and from the Brain and Cognitive Science Department. In fact, I think it's in part because of MIT's strengths in all these different areas that are central to understanding collective intelligence that MIT is perhaps uniquely positioned to have what we believe is the first center for collective intelligence anywhere in the country. Much of the work in the Center for Collective Intelligence is supported by our group of corporate sponsors. Some sponsors focus on a particular project. For instance, Cisco sponsored the project on measuring collective intelligence and is very interested in implications this might have for things like new kinds of collaboration technology to help groups of individuals be much more intelligent on a scale larger than was ever possible before. Another sponsor, uh, Manpower, has been involved in our project on the collective intelligence genome and was particularly involved in identifying the new gene we call the hyper-specialization gene, which we think has huge implications for a business like theirs.